Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the live stream. Today, today we're going to continue our reading of the Iran Contra scandal trading cards put out by Clips Comics in 19. What was the date on this? 19. 19. That's not the one. 19. 19. Where's the date? Oh, it doesn't have the date here. Hold on. We'll take a look at this. 1988, 1988, the Iran Contra trade, 1988. Okay, so we're going to continue our reading. We read cards number one to 12 here, okay, in the last stream last week, and we're going to continue the reading and we're going to read cards number 13 to 24. Okay, and these cards came out of this box, um, which I have open. Right, and when I cracked open this box, I realized the little insert that's usually in the box um, in all the trading cards that we've had, we've done the reading for uh, from Eclipse Commons because they put out a whole bunch of political trading cards and some music and sports. Um, the insert wasn't in there, so I grabbed another deck that I have. I believe I have three decks of these, okay, if I recall correctly. I've been buying a whole bunch uh, lately of eclipse uh, comics trading cards and i'm sort of losing track of the the handful that i have or the few that i have um so i checked this one and it has the insert there so i want to take a look at this insert that way we've read the insert of all the cards okay and then we'll start reading these and this insert uh, doesn't look like it has anything in the back of it right uh usually the all the inserts so far have had a front and a back with a little intro of what these cards are about and these ones are one of the earlier sets that eclipse comics put out i'm not sure which one would be the earliest i think 1988 was the earliest so this could have been the first set they ever put out i actually have to look into that um because a lot of the other cards we've been reading have been 89 92 93 and around there early 90s so maybe they upgraded it because they were putting out more cars and they had a list of all the different cars they had there right so let's have a read through this the insert for this other current event items from eclipse books p.o box 1099 forts forestville california not five four three six um brought to light 895 an 80 page full color graphic documentary that reveals 30 years of covert action wow drug running and arms deals that robbed america uh robbed america and betrayed the constitution based on the christic institute's explosive investigation it's like a television documentary you you carry around in your pocket and without the usual network censorship whoa jonathan marshall the iran contra connection what okay this is the first time we're seeing this bit of info i don't remember seeing this one brought to light full color graphic documentary i need to remember to remember to uh maybe track that down el salvador a house divided a 40 page factual black and white comic book oh real war stories a 48 page color comic book about the military two dollars now just to give you guys a recap we found out about all of the eclipse comics trading cards from the real war stories number two that we read and in the back they had an advertisement for the jfk cards and i don't know if the drug war trading cards were in there too they had the jfk cards and something else and we were like whoa what's this and after doing a little bit of research i found out eclipse comics put out a whole bunch of trading cards historical trading cards and that's how we got into this went down this rabbit hole of collecting all these comics uh, all these comics all these cards where i've spent uh, over a thousand dollars us getting our hands on some of these cards and where we've put out uh, a few hours uh, of reading cards and we're going to continue to do so okay and it was a great comic book reading by the way great comic book reading 
uh, it had, it actually I believe also had uh, General Wet, uh, Wesley Snipes uh, war is a racket right uh, fell farewell to the Gipper 160 page pages of uh, biting cartoons by Dan O'Neill Bush League trading cards cool we got that as well we got the Bush League trading cards run to the core New York City political scandal trading cards we have those as well um, and they came out 89 I believe and this is 88 so <laughs> this is advertising something's coming out next year I guess and rotten to the core has the uh, rookie card for Donald Trump that we're reading for friendly dictators trading cards we have those as well additional sets of Iran contra scandal trading cards nice nice please add a dollar fifty postage per order total enclosed blub now if you were a collectible investor type of person this price right here rotten to the core uh rotten to the core new york city's political scandal trading cards for 9.95 would have been an amazing investment one of the best investments you could have made in your life if you bought these in 1988-1989 because with the donald trump rookie card graded at 10 that's selling for around a thousand dollars us graded at nine selling anywhere between mm, on the cheap side 400 on the expensive tied to around 650 us and uh, the odds are it's going to go higher okay so that's the insert for the wrong contra trading cards salutations to everyone that's joining us right now um we got google on the sensor tube eric Shosted on sensor tube um so i'm gonna put this guy aside there i'm gonna take the box we have here and put it over here as well because we're gonna put the cars back where they belong and we've got a bunch of people that joined us on uh, twitch as well zom01 thank you very much for redeeming the points and uh i'm gonna get back into uh reading these cards or get into reading these cards okay gang um and i will most likely hold off on uploading the individual cards until we've done all the readings and then um because i'm sort of editing these on the side and loading them up but i still have them as private and we'll make them go public uh each card all the sets back to back so it'll probably take us about two weeks to upload all of these cards all of these cards as individual readings and as a three sets that we're going to do okay now that we've got our little recap intro reading the insert done let's get into continuing reading the individual cards okay card number 13 oliver north oliver north the antagonist i guess you could call him right of the iran contra affair the patsy maybe the main note that everything went through or almost everything went through right card number 13 marine lieutenant colonel oliver north Marine Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, a Vietnam veteran and Naval War College graduate, joined the National Security Council staff at the White House in 1981. Self-motivated and religiously anti-communist, North fit right in to the increased uh, operational role envisioned for the NSC by the, by the Reagan team. When Robert Budd McFarlane became national security advisor in late 1983 see card number 28 he handed north the contra account passing on instructions from president reagan to keep the contras alive quote in body and in soul end quote north went to great lengths to perform this his duties according to noriega's aide jose blando north jose blando north had two meetings with panama's str uh, strongman manuel noriega in 1985 
even though Washington knew Noriega was involved in the international drug trade. Uh, Blandon alleges North pledged to help obtain, obtain U.S. aid to ease Panama's foreign debt crisis and lined up a PR firm called IBC, C card number 15, to improve Noriega's sagging public image. In return, Noriega promised to help in uh, setting up two Contra training camps in Panama. A look at Albert Hakim's records, C card number 20, shatters North's public image as a selfless patriot. Of 16.1 million in profits from missile sales to Iran, only 3.8 million found its way to the Contras. Although he had less expensive arms suppliers, North steered most Contra business to the enterprise at, at inflated prices. North himself skimmed at least $20,000 in Contra fund for his personal use, and in 1988, he was indicted for defrauding the U.S. government. And again, we're going to read the little bottom text. Iran-Contra scandal, trading cards, text 1988, copyright 1988, Paul Brancato, art copyright 1988, Salim Yukop, Enterprise, Eclipse Enterprises, P.O. Box 1099, Forestville, California, 95436. Oliver North. Look at those puppy eyes, right? And I wonder if this is Ollie North's rookie card. Would be cool. Should look into it. Card number fourteen. Card number fourteen. Robert Owen, money man. Robert Owen. <clears throat> Robert Owen with a mafia hat. Gangster. Who is this guy? State Department contractor Robert Owen. Robert Owen, former, former legislative aide to Indiana Senator, now Republican vice presidential candidate Dan Quayle, was recruited by NC, NSC staffer Oliver North, CIA hand John Hall, whom he had first met in Quayle's office in 1983, and Contra leader Adolfo Calero, C card number 13, 12, and 4, for the crucial role of liaison between individuals who were aiding the Contras. Once on the Contras FDN payroll, Owen, known as the Courier, took up his new job as North Bagman with zeal. Acting as North's eyes and ears, he reported on the military and financial needs of the Contras and their helpers and del, uh, delivered money tra uh, travelers checks maps encryption devices and instructions to them in 1985 with the with help from calero and north owens new company idea which he operated out of his home was given a fifty thousand dollar state department contract to deliver humanitarian aid to the contras through Owen's influence, some of his, this State Department money was awarded to Air, Mo Air Match, a covert Pentagon operation, and some to Ocean Hunter, a Medellin cocaine cartel operation with ties to the CIA's John Hall, see cards 10, 11, and 12. Despite the fact, despite the fact that his patriotic zeal had entangled him with international drug traffickers and criminals, Owen expressed deep regard for Oliver North, the man who had recruited him. This was evidenced by his reading to the Iran Contra Committee from a poem written by John Hall. Quote, the knowledge that one this the, the knowledge that on this troubled earth 
there still walks men like all the north in our lifetime you have given us a legend end quote Whoa. <laughs> robert owen robert owen bunch of fanatics a poem about this guy let's read these two things together oops let's read these things these words together okay what do we got what do we got while we look at ollie north's face the puppy eyes looking gleefully into the sky right coat the knowledge that on this troubled earth there still walk men like ollie north in our lifetime you have given us a legend a legend indeed a legend indeed oh, wow wow fanatics fanatics <laughs> card number 15 card number 15 let's check this out n e p l presidents contrathon contrathon with special guest lieutenant colonel oliver north carl spitz channel Card number 15, Contra fundraiser Carl Spitz Channel. In 1985, Carl Spitz Channel, Chanel? Channel and his associate Richard Miller began to raise money for the Contras from wealthy American conservatives. For this purpose, they created a network of tax-exempt foundations with Innocent sounding names such as the National Endowment for the Preservation of Liberty, NEPL, and International Business Communication, IBC. The standard fundraising session, session the one two punch, began with a slide presentation by Oliver North, which portrayed the contrast as virtuous but poorly equipped freedom fighters battling the godless Sandinistas Marxist Leninists. Then Chanel, uh, Chanel would conclude the event by detailing the specific needs of the contrast, including military needs, and would arrange White House briefings for contributors who sometimes got to meet the president if the donation was large enough. Chanel and Miller were not very efficient fundraisers. Large amounts of money were used to lease expensive offices, rent limousines, throw lavish parties, and pay high salaries to themselves and others. Of the $10 million uh, they raised, only 4.7 7 million went to the Contras. One million was used for pro-Contra publicity and advertisements in Contra aid swing vote districts. In 1987, Chanel and Miller were convicted of defrauding the IRS using tax exempt monies for illegal contributions of lethal lethal aid to the Contras. Some of the peons getting thrown to the wolves. Right. Carl Spitz. Carl Spitz. Let's look at all these face. Look at this. Look at that big smile with a gap in his teeth. Bet he could whistle like mad. Right. And Halagos posting that this dude died in 1990, two years after these cars came out. Very cool, very cool. I wonder if we got onto a little plane and uh, was flying somewhere. Card number 16. Card number 16. 
Joseph Coors. Joseph Coors. Adolf's. Joseph Coors. Beer magnets. Is this a Coors, people? It is. Beer magnet. Joseph Coors. Joseph Coors, president of Coors Brewing Company, is a member of Reagan's kitchen cabinet, having joined that body in 1980. An enthusiastic anti-communist, Coors was a keystone of the Contra support system put together by the White House. His donation of $65,000 to NEPL, C card number 15, used to purchase a small plane, was put uh, was but a fraction of the overall support he gave to the Contra cause. Profits from the sale of Coors Beer, Coors Beer have funded many of the non-governmental institutions that promoted and su sustained, sustained the Contra war. These include the Heritage Foundation, a right-wing think tank, Citizens for America, a grassroots lobby, and John Singh Labs, U.S. Council for World Freedom, the American chapter of WACLC card number seven. The Kitchen Cabinet is a group of millionaires who have financed the Ronald Reagan's political career from the government sh governorship of California to the White House. This group has profited greatly from Reagan's pro-business policies. Its members include Holmes Tuttle of Ford and Rexall, A.C. Rubble, Chairman of Union Oil, Henry Sal Salvatore, oil developer, Justin Dart and Dart of Dartcraft, Leonard Firestone of Firestone Tire and Rubber, Taft Schlooper of MCA Inc. and uh, William French Smith, Reagan's former Attorney General. Other wealthy conservatives who contributed to the Contra Contras through NEPL include Barbara Newton, two million eight hundred sixty-five thousand twenty-five dollars; Ellen Garwood, two million five hundred eighteen thousand one hundred thirty-five dollars and Nelson Bunker Hunt, $484,500. The Coors Company. This dude. Adolf Cole Coors. Joseph Coors. Joseph Coors. Card number 17. Ken Fa King Fahad, oh, snap, the Saudis are in. I'm a Contra too, King Fahad, I believe he's Saudi, if I'm thinking about the right person. Yeah, that's him. Saudi Arabian monarch Fahad bin Abd al Aziz. Saudi Arabia's King Fahad is one of 45 sons of Ibn Saud, who funded the modern, who founded the modern state of Saudi Arabia in 1932. The Bedouin king was the lar largest single contributor to the Contras. Congressional investigators traced a total of 33.6 million. That passed through Adolf uh, Calero's FDN bank account. Of that amount, 32 million was received from Saudi Arabia. It was a small price to pay for continued U.S. military support for his regime. Fahad gave many times that amount to the Afghan Mujahideen, another U.S.-backed anti-communist force. The man who opened the doors. To the mullahs, uh, mullah, uh, mullahs, mullah was General Richard C. Cord, C. Card number 19. As the head of the Pentagon's foreign military sales program from 1978 to 
Secord oversaw sales of billions of dollars in military equipment to the nations of the Middle East. In 1981, Secord and Oliver North, Secord number 13, success successfully lobbied Congress to support the support the 8.5 billion sale of AWACS surveillance planes to Saudi Arabia over the stiff objection of the Israeli lobby, thus assuring uh, King Fahad's support of the Contras. King Fahad is the world's second richest monarch with a personal fortune estimated at 20 billion. The world's wealthiest monarch is the Sultan of uh, Brunei, uh, Brunei, a tiny oil-rich country near uh, Brunei. Although his personal wealth is estimated at 25 billion, the Sultan gave the Contras a mere 10 million. Saudi Arabia steps in. Elliot Abrams. Elliot Abrams. Card number 18. Card number 18. Elliot Abrams. Schultz in the background. Elliot Abrams. Assistant Secretary of State, Elliot Abrams, card number 18. Elliot Abrams, Assistant Secretary of State for uh, Inter-American Affairs, was previously in charge of the Reagan administration's human rights program. In testimony before a congressional committee, he implied that support for the Contra war against Nicaragua was part of the administration's human rights policies. Abrams has lied to Congress repeat repeatedly. He misrepresented his role in soliciting a contribution for the Contras from the Sultan of Brunei, see card number 17, when the Hassan Fuss flight was shot down, see card number 29. Abrams testified to a House subcommittee that the U.S. government was not involved in any way and later he helped uh, concoct a story laying the blame on general john singla c card number seven a few months prior to this he had helped win 20 million dollars in emergency aid to honduras by greatly exaggerating claims of nicaraguan incursions into honduran territory abrams actions form a pattern pattern of disinformation that characterizes the Reagan administration as a whole and as a whole and George Schultz's State Department in particular from the beginning the administration lied about its intentions in Nicaragua claiming that its covert actions were intended to cut off arms shipments from Nicaragua to El Salvador when in fact they were creating an invasion force. Abrams went on to lead the administration's highly publicized but unsuccessful drive to remove Panama's drug dealing General Manuel Nicaragua from power. Elliot Abrams. Card number 19, Richard Secord, U.S. U.S.A. Richard Secord. Look at that salute. Let's get that salute nicely focused. Oh, come on. We want your name in there too. Let's get you. That's okay. We'll get him like this. Look at that face. Super Patriot. Richard Secord. <clears throat> Card 
card number 19 retired air force major general richard secord retired air force major general richard v secord's specialty is aerial logistics he learned his trade in southern asia from 1963 to 1968 flying over 285 combat missions as the air wing commander for the cia secret war in laos he was in charge of all tactical air operations in 1983 secord resigned under a cloud because of his involvement with thomas Kleins, c card number 22 and edwin wilson the renegade cia officer who was convicted of selling arms to Libya. Soon Secord learned, uh, teamed up with his old friend Albert Hakim, Secord number 20, and started the enterprise, which was part business empire, arms deals, and part military and security operations, covert well warfare and intelligence. Second began Secord began working for Oliver North, Secord number 13, and the National Security Council in 1984 at the behest of CIA Director William Casey, Secord number 5. Casey called the general a man who, who got things done. Within two years, the Enterprise had five airplanes, two pilots, pilots on contract, two airfields, a boat, a stockpile of guns and military equipment, and numerous shell companies and secret bank accounts all for the purpose of conducting covert military action for the NSC the enterprise realized a profit of 16 million uh, 100 16 million 100 thousand dollars on the sale of missiles to Ayatollah Khomeini out of this sec out of this Secord Hakim and Kleins each took an equal share of 2.2 million dollars as their personal cut in 1988 secord was indicted for defrauding the u.s government and iran kicks in here with weapons right richard secord that's a 2.2 million dollar salute right there thank you very much and the planes and the guns and the airfields and the party <laughs> card number 20 look at this guy albert hakim with his love on tattoo for ollie look at that on his little belly button Albert Hakim look at him look at this guy such an innocent looking face Ollie tattoo isn't that cute who is he card number 20 arms merchant albert hakim in 1978 iranian expatriate businessman albert hakim obtained contracts from bactel corporation a large defense contractor then headed by george soltz and casper weinberger see card number six the same year theodore shackley see card number 24 introduced hakim to Richard Secord, C card number 19 in Iran. Secord was then in charge of US arms sales to the Shah, and Hakim had contacts in the Iranian military and in the Shah's secret police, Savak. The huge des desperate uh, disparity between what the Pentagon charged and what the Iranians were willing to pay enabled Hakim and allegedly Secord to make fortunes by skimming profits off these arms sales. After Secord resigned from the military, Hakim became his partner. He was the financial wizard behind the enterprise, a non-governmental pro 
profit-making operation which aided the Reagan administration's covert foreign policies. The tangled web of shell companies and offshore bank accounts that Hakim created and controlled for the enterprise was designed, uh, designed as Secord admitted, to confuse anyone who might start poking around. For instance, when congressional investigators poked into the B B for belly button account, Hakim explained that he had set up his two hundred thousand dollar trust for Oliver North's family out of respect to North, whose uh, radiation of patriotic love immediately penetrated to his to my system. This is uh, inconsistent with Hakim's admission that he was only in it for the money. In 1988, Albert Hakim was indicted, indicted, indicted uh, for defrauding the U.S. government. Look at that! Look at this! Look at this face! Would you like sit down and have tea and apple pie with this 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 dude? So innocent looking. Card number twenty one the Enterprise Richard Gad and Robert Dutton the Enterprise or Enterprise. Card number 21, Career Air Force Officers Richard Gadd and Robert Dutton. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Richard Gadd retired in September 1982 after 20 years of service in covert operations. A career transport pilot, Gadd had recently served as liaison between Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Joint Special Operations Command at Fort Bragg home of unconventional warfare. Gad had learned from friends in the Army Special Operations Division, C card number six, that the Army needed a black commercial transport ability. Passing up a promotion to full colonel, Gad retired and formed Sam Samarco which specialized in providing the Pentagon and CIA with clandestine air transport. He arranged to rent planes and hire pirates through Southern Air Transport, a CIA proprietary. When Richard Secor's enterprise began its Contra resupply operation in 1985, Sea Card number 20, Second Sea Court turned to Gad to manage uh, manage daily logistics. Gad supervised the construction of the secret Santa Elena airstrip in Costa Rica, sea card number 23. In early 1986, Secord, citing the five Ps, piss poor performance for no prior planning, replaced Gad with retired Air Force Colonel Robert Dutton. Gad's former superior officer. Dutton has served under Secord in Iran, selling weapons to the Shah, and again in 1980, Iran hostage rescue mission. A cable sent by Dutton from Central America to Oliver North provided a lighter, lighter moment during the Iran Contra hearing. Quote, Saint Fon can't survive on milk and cookies. End quotes. Enterprise. Card number twenty two. Thomas.
Klein. Thomas Klein. Thomas Klein. CI agent and arms merchant Thomas Klein card number 22 Thomas Gregory Klein's first met Richard Secord C card number 19 during the secret war in Laos Klein's a CIA base chief in Long Teng supervised the creation of a secret army of Hmong tribesmen to fight the communist Pathet Lao Lao forces the Hmong were traditionally opium growers. With the CIA's help, General Wang Pao, leader of the Hung army, became a major supplier of opium. Secor's air wing flew tactical raids against the Pathet Lao, Lao, which also had the effect of destroying Von Pao's competition. Air America, the CIA's airline, transported the opium from Laos to Thailand. The CIA's secret Laotian operations were particularly fi par partially financed by opium profits. Klein's and Secor's team up again in the Middle East during the mid-1970s. The Pentagon awarded Klein's company EATSCO its a contract worth over one billion dollars to ship arms to Egypt according to renegade CIA agent Edwin Wilson Secord who had helped to secure the contract was also a silent partner in Etsco as with Theodore Shackley Secord number 24 this blatant conflict of interest led to Secord's early retirement from the military Kleins pleaded guilty in 1983 to overcharging the Pentagon $8 million, for which he paid fines of $110,000. In 1984, Secord brought Kleins into the enterprise, Secord number 1920, an excerpt in the small weapons, an expert in the small weapons market. Kleins brokered the enterprises. A European deals involving purchases and transportation of arms for the Contras. Card number 22. Thomas Kleins. And Alugas posting that Kleins was the only Iran Contra defendant to have served a prison sentence. That's why he doesn't look too happy, maybe. Don't. The belly button dude didn't serve any time, I guess. Card number 23. Who's this guy? Rafael Chichi Quintero. Rafael Chichi Quintero. Is he Cuban? Is that Castro doll? Good thing he's not a Chicho. He's a Chichi. Who is this guy? CIA veteran Rafael Chichi Quintero, card number 23. Rafael Chichi Quintero, CIA veteran, once said that if he were granted immunity and compelled to testify about past actions it would be the biggest scandal ever to hit the united states an ex an ex an explosives expert and sniper quintero got his early training as a member of the cia's operation 40 assassination unit also called the shooter team this elite group born of secret collaboration between agents of the cia the mafia and richard nixon was formed to assassinate fidel and raul castro and che Guevara. led for many years by e howard hunt the shooter team 
was part of an advanced unit that was left stranded in Cuba after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Quintero escaped from Cuba and returned to Miami, where he began working under then CIA agent Thomas Klein's C card number 22. This this work included engaging in CIA covert operations in Southern Asia, Iran, and Central America. After Kleins joined the enterprise, C card number 19, Rafael Quintero handled the offloading and distribution of weapons shipments to the Contras under Kleins' direction. When John Hall's ranch, C card number 12, began to uh, attract attention from Costa Rican authorities, the enterprise built a new secret air sh airstrip at Santa Elena, Costa Rica, with help from the State Department's Elliot Abrams, C card number 18, Robert Owens, C card number 14, and Louis uh, Thames, Tarbs, Thames, then U.S. Ambassador to Costa Rica. Quintero, whom Secord called my man, managed supply operations from this new airship, which was used for the shipment of guns and drugs. Rafael Chichi Quintero. Rafael Chichi Quintero. Card number 24. Theodore Shackley. Looks like an erasure head from Dick Tracy comics. Theodore Shackley. Former CIA agent Theodore Shackley, card number 24. Known as the Blonde Ghost, Theodore G. Shackley played a central role in the formation of the secret team. After the abortive Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba in 1961, Shackley became CIA station chief in Miami. There, he directed Operation Mongoose, conducting sabotage and assassination raids on Cuba. His deputy, Thomas Kleins, C card number 22, helped supervise E. Howard Hunt's shooter team, C card number 23. From 1966 to 1968, Shackley was station chief in Laos, where he directed Richard Secord's air wing, C card number 20. Shackley and Kleins were transferred to Saigon in 1969, where for four years Shackley directed Operation Phoenix. During those years, the program, during those years, the program designed to neutralize communist sympathizers, claimed the lives of 40,000 civilians. One of Shackley's subordinates at this time was Donald Gregg, C card number 31. Shackley's next to last CIA post was as commander of worldwide covert operations, working under George Bush from 1976 to 1977, C card number 32. Theodore Shackley retired from the CIA in 1979, and he served on the transition team, which planned Ronald Reagan's entry into the White House. His involvement in covert operations did not end with his retirement, however. Having previously introduced Richard Secord to Albert Hakim, C cars number 19 and 20, he served as a consultant to the enterprise, enterprise until its apparent demise. In 1984, he took part in the Manucher Gorbenfar plan to trade arms for hostages, hostage for hostage CIA agent William Buckley, 
see card number 25 and 26 recently Shackley has been a lecturer on unconventional warfare 40,000 civilians 40,000 civilians let's look at his eyes 40,000 civilians murdered and Allah God says this piece of shit died in 1975 of cancer right. Theodore Shackley that's card number 24 gang that's 24 cards we got 12 cards to read in the next live stream of the Iran Contra scandal right crazy informative as I mentioned before you could probably do a bachelor's thesis on one or two of these and do a master's thesis or a well, bachelor's thesis on one of these cards master's thesis on two or three of them and a PhD on this whole deck right. we'll continue the reading most likely next week the Iran Contra scandal trading cards the secret team that's where the secret teams coming in right 